This is the modularity lecture for the grids and modularity section of week three in the Art 159 graphic design layout course. This is how we are going to be using creative systems of thinking to better unify and balance our design work. And the idea of modularity can also be used as constraints to create certain outcomes. So modularity is a fixed element that is used within a larger system or structure. Here we can see an example of this wall that's filled with post-it notes. And this is a great example of modularity because post-it notes are all the same size and they can be overlapped. And when they do, we begin to see an overall pattern that comes from the image itself of all of these post-its put together rather than the singularity of each one of these individual post-it notes. And that's really the idea of modularity. Modularity is also a way to put a constraint on a process. Take, for example, Mario from the old school video games that are a great example of this. They look this way because of the limitations and restrictions because of the processing power that was available at that time. There was not a lot of pixels available on the screens in the video games, so there was not a high resolution. And this has really been popularized by pixel art as well. And people sort of break, embrace this old school look now but it's amazing to see how we can recognize this character with such limited colors and these simple shapes. On the right, we can see an example that is sort of building off of this. And this is an artist who creates these portraits out of Rubik's cubes. And this is another great restraint that puts both the colors that are available on the cube and the combination of turning these colors within the cube to create the overall image that they're displaying. Another example of this is Legos. If you've ever played with Legos in your life, then you've explored the idea of modularity. There are limits in the manufacturing that do not create every single shape and color, but you can still create these amazing pieces from the restraints that are put forth. If any of you guys have ever been to Legoland, you know that there's some amazing structures that are created through the use of these individual Legos that you don't necessarily look at each individual Lego within the piece, you look at the overall structure and that modularity is what's being used to create that. This is a different sort of example here of a shelving system that was created by Herman Miller. And this is another example of modular system. It uses two different widths and they are also the same height so that you can interchange and move around items within the overall structure of the uh, shelving unit. We can also see how this can be used in uh, ways to organize different elements such as food within our Tupperware systems. They are using this modularity to display these different uh, sizes that fit together within some sort of larger system for organization within the different sizes that are available here of the different containers. These are different examples that we can see that icons are being used where they leverage this modularity for unity. Here we can see these different animal graphics that are built from the same basic structures of triangles and circles using different colors and they're able to create a really wide variety of these different animals. And when we're referencing modularity, Oftentimes we think about this in the use of sort of um, styles that we can apply towards these sort of building blocks, as you will, which often kind of comes back to this idea of childhood or children as well. Here on the left, we can see a group of icons that have these sort of similar elements to them. They're using similar line weight and similar colors that create this sense of modularity, this sense of commonality between all of these different icons. Same thing over here on the right. These were icons that were developed by Otto Lieter. He was a German designer. And some of these were used for the uh, Olympics that was created to show all of the different sports that were being featured. So you can see in the enlarged image over here on the right, there's this very sophisticated grid that they are using to create each and every one of these icons. And there's a variety of icons in sports that you can see all use the same grid and the same use of modularity with the same width of all of the lines, the same axis of these directional lines. And it's very important to the overall cohesiveness of the look and feel of this system. 
This also expands into branding. This is a project by Stefan Sagmeister. And there is a logo at the top that fits together in all of these different options here that write out the design museo and we can see that they are deconstructing that within the different modular elements to play with these different letter forms within the overall piece here as well and even breaking these modular elements apart even further by having these perforated edges that you can tear and take away different parts of the overall design for information this is another branding project that was created by Stefan Sagmeister, and this is a logo for the city of Melbourne here, which has all of the different styles that are created in this overall modular structure of this M. And within this sort of M, they're able to play with all of these different textures and these different line qualities and different shapes, but they all create this very cohesive structure to the overall branding of the project. This is a branding identity system that was created for the Whitney Museum. It was a new identity and the result of nearly two years of collaboration between the Whitney and Amsterdam based design team with this experimental jet set, this W shape that is responsive, meaning the Whitney design department who handles the creation of all the museum materials can bend, stretch and flip to fit this sort of W in whatever canvas or format it is needed. So modularity is a fixed element used within a larger system or structure. And we can see how this also applies to our use of grids as well within our designs. Now, one thing to keep in mind with modularity is again, this idea of limitations. Limitations can sometimes sound like a bad word to make your project or your assignment sound even more difficult. But in reality, this can create a stronger unity. And that's why we use them. When we put constraints on ourselves, oftentimes we get elements that feel more common to one another because of that use of constraints and modular elements. Modular typography is a great example of these limitations. In both of these examples, we can see that these modular typefaces were used within the constraints to create a system of unity between the different letter forms, whether it's on the left by bending this paper and having the shadow and light source be consistent throughout, or whether it's on the right using these basic uh, half circles or, well, half circles really put together to create this entire alphabet that we can see. And this is an example here of the work of Will Crowell. He was actually a Dutch designer. And he was famous for his use with grids and modularity. He had the nickname of Gridnik because of his obsession with grids. And this was actually an alphabet that he created called No Alphabet. And it relies purely on these horizontal and vertical strokes with these shearing angles. And it's an experiment with constraints that create this modular structure and this consistency within all of the different letter forms that are included within this typeface. So within this module, you are going to be working on two different parts of an assignment. The Grids and Modularity Part 1 Assignment Introduction will be using InDesign and a template that is provided to you within the learning module. You're going to utilize the grid of black squares that is provided to you to create four colored compositions. Now you can use any colors that you like and play with the kind of compositions that you can create. Experiment with creating connections between all the squares or segmenting portions of the grid. And you can see different examples here as well as in the module if you would like to look at these previous examples. You're going to be working with the same grid in each one of these compositions and creating four compositions in total. I would encourage you to use two of the compositions to create a more organic layout like we can see here that's not pictorial and maybe two of the compositions that are pictorial that share some sort of visual language to some sort of image. Maybe it's your favorite album cover, a picture, an item, an object, whatever that may be. So please refer to the module for the template and the information regarding the assignment on this uh, particular uh, modularity practice for part one. And please reach out if you have any questions.